born and raised in Singapore, Divya Loudon thinks her future may lie elsewhere in state. The 31-year-old, who works in the technology sector, got married in the city-state in 2022 but is considering settling down overseas with her British husband in the long run. The couple, who have no children, think homes are too expensive in Singapore, where they currently live. Loudon also feels the country's cost of living has risen to a point where raising a family would be taxing. Despite government incentives given to encourage procreation, such as the lower fees for preschool education announced in February. I always feel like whenever the government gives us money. So whenever they give us some sort of bonus or whatever, it's always taken back in one way or another, she told Nikki Asia. Some other cost is going to increase, so it's never just going to be like this, is free money. Loudon's outlook gives clues to the population challenges and other pressures, both internal and external, that the government, led by the People's Action Party, faces as it tries to maintain the city-state's standing as one of Asia's most prominent economic hubs. That task falls on Singapore's next leader, Deputy Prime Minister Lawrence Wong, who will become its fourth Prime Minister on May 15. It was announced last week in the city-state's first leadership change in 20 years. Since independence in 1965, the late founding Prime Minister, Lee Kuan Yew, who served until 1990, successor Go Chok Tong until 2004 and incumbent Lee Shin Long, son of Lee Kuan Yew, led dramatic growth for Singapore, building an export-driven economy and cementing its position as a regional financial hub. The city-state's per capita gross domestic product top $80.000 in 2022, one of the highest in the world. But the 51-year-old Wong, who might serve as long as his predecessors did, must find a growth path for the city-state in a different and more challenging environment, which he described as a very troubled world during his budget speech in February. A leadership transition now is a bit risky, not only because the new team may be pressed very quickly to address economic challenges if, for instance, slowing Chinese growth constrains the wider region, but also because Singapore could well be pulled into geopolitical rivalries and even conflicts, noted Meredith Weiss, a professor of political science at the State University of New York in Albany. Domestically, Singapore's inability over the years to sway enough of its citizens, like Loudoun, to raise more than one child their ways on its ambition to keep growth steady because the tiny island nation, lacking natural resources, depends on its people as the prime resource for powering progress. Statistics released in February showed that the average number of births per woman dropped below 1.0 for the first time last year to 0.97. Prime Minister Lee, in the same month, urged families to have more children in his Lunar New Year address. Survey results, released in January by the Institute of Policy Studies, a Singaporean think tank, showed that 7 in 10 young adults between the ages of 21 and 34 felt no need to get married. In addition, healthcare expenditures are rising as the population ages, they will reach an estimated 18.7 billion Singapore dollars, 13.7 billion dollars in the budget for fiscal 2024. Up 2.6 times in the past decade. Globally, the island state faces a world rife with risks amid simmering rivalry between the US and China that could worsen following the American presidential election in November, in which former President Donald Trump who brought fraught relations with Beijing during his first stint, will face incumbent President Joe Biden. A Trump administration will definitely raise uncertainty in the global trade landscape if he wins. And we expect him to return towards a more aggressive America first trade policy, noted one way Tan, Asia analyst at the Economist Intelligence Unit. The increasing fragmentation of trading blocks 
could end up reducing the global trade volume or increasing logistics costs, which is clearly negative for Singapore. Wong himself acknowledged that brewing international problems are challenging his trade-oriented country when he presented the government's budget to Parliament in February. The past year has not been easy. The international environment was troubled. The global economy was subdued, said Wong, who also serves as finance minister. As prime minister, Wong is expected to continue the previous leader's approach of spurring Singapore's growth as a regional hub for finance, trade and high-tech while strengthening social support programs to deal with issues such as inequality. In the February budget speech, he said the city-state will invest over SG$11 billion in research and development, as well as artificial intelligence, the financial sector and clean energy. We will grow the economy. We must. For growth is the prerequisite to create better jobs and raise living standards for all, Wong said during the speech. Monil Baskaran, an economist and CEO of the consultancy Centennial Asia Advisors, said he expects Singapore will make efforts with like-minded nations to maintain some momentum in multilateral economic partnerships such as via digital partnership agreements at a time when more countries are turning to inward-looking policies. But pressures are mounting amid intensifying competition with neighbours aiming to become a regional hub. Multinational corporations are increasingly locating some Southeast Asian regional headquarters functions outside Singapore to save money and pursue expanded opportunities. Neighbouring Malaysia's proposed fiscal 2024 budget introduced global service hub tax incentives for locating regional headquarters there, including preferential income tax rates of 5% to 10% for up to a decade. Thailand is another leading candidate for drawing regional headquarters that aim to expand production and sales. There are also limits to the generous tax breaks that Singapore has used until now to lure foreign corporations. The city-state is set to raise corporate taxes on multinationals from the start of next year as it aligns itself with an international agreement to set a minimum tax rate, potentially denting its appeal as an investment base for large companies in the region. While the city-state may have held its own amid competition with rival hub Hong Kong to draw foreign capital, there are also concerns that it has become a haven for all types of capital, including dirty money. In August, police arrested 10 people holding passports from China, Turkey, Cambodia and several other countries in connection with the biggest money laundering case in Singapore's history. Authorities have seized or frozen assets worth over SG$3 billion, from cars to houses, all allegedly obtained with gains from criminal activity overseas. The government is taking seriously the task of keeping international capital flowing into Singapore. But this is part of the problem, said Michael Barr, an associate professor at Australia's Flinders University. They need new thinking not just more of the old thinking. Singapore now has an international reputation for sleazy and dodgy money. Bribery and corruption, he added. That will not make it all that attractive to the sort of investor Singapore wants to attract. Meanwhile, the ruling People's Action Party, which guards its reputation for clean governance, has had to do damage control over its own scandals. In July 2023, the Speaker of Parliament resigned and left the party over an extramarital affair. Former Transport Minister S. Iswaran was recently charged on multiple counts of receiving favours such as soccer and show tickets in a corruption case that has rocked the party. As the incoming leader, Wong has been saddled with the task of rebuilding the image of his party, which has governed without disruption for six decades even as it strives to bring Singapore into another new era. Observers say that founding Prime Minister Lee, who died in 2015, built the ruling party's legitimacy by delivering growth, opportunity and a promising future.
Wang and his batch of younger politicians. Dubbed the fourth generation of 4G team, will soon be tasked with convincing voters that his administration has the capability to lead the country as the clock ticks toward the next general election. Due by November 2025. Many observers expect the ruling party will once again win, but they will be watching the level of support Wong will command. In the previous election, in 2020, the opposition won a record number of seats, with surveys suggesting that the younger generation, many of whom did not experience the high-growth era and have different life priorities than their elders, preferred the opposition. The challenge is for Wong to set a direction and demonstrate that his team is indeed refreshed rather than simply more of the same, said Jia Ian Chung, an associate political science professor at the National University of Singapore. Banking on Lee's record looks at the past, not the future.